Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Is it too much to ask that both candidates be treated equally and fairly? Just a willingness to ask questions to both sides. You know, that right there is really all we've been asking. Again, let's go back to Trump's first term in office when he was walking down that slippery ramp with leather bottom sole shoes. This video. After that clip surfaced, the entire mainstream media, the entire White House press corps, everybody was asking the same question. Is the president in good health? Is he okay? Or should the 25th Amendment be used to remove Donald Trump from office? We all remember that. There was such a massive media campaign that Donald Trump was even forced to take a cognitive and physical test. That was the standard for Donald Trump. But now what about Joe? It's been four years of falling upstairs. Falling off of bicycles, <laughs> tripping on wires, <laughs> uttering completely incoherent nonsense, <laughs> and still freaking crickets. Not a mention of the 25th Amendment. Of course, until now. It took four years for the media to do its damn job. To realize that this guy has dementia and that he probably should be replaced. You get these moments in history, sometimes it's the first lady who has to tell her husband the time's up. When you talk to some veteran Democrats, they say it's too late to really think about replacing him. However, others say, no, it's not. They're still an off ramp. Sir, do you think Democrats should consider replacing Joe Biden at the top of the presidential ticket? I've had several raise the possibility privately in conversation. Can you imagine a scenario where Joe Biden does step down and another Democrat, whether it be Kamala Harris or someone else, steps up. Now, all of a sudden, it seems like everybody's eyes have been opened. Why that is? Well, obviously, it's because their back's against a wall. But I'm just sitting here again asking the question, what took so long? Why couldn't this be the approach, the standard from day one? That's what would have been fair. This is the kind of media onslaught that Karine Jean-Pierre should have been dealing with since day one of the Biden administration taking over in January 20th, 2021. This freaking charade would have ended a long time ago. Let's take a look at what's going on. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so it really wasn't that long ago. We all remember when Kayleigh McEnany was White House press secretary under Donald Trump's administration. Every day was an onslaught of horrible, most of the time narrative building or gotcha questions. It was a constant onslaught on a daily basis. And obviously Biden's White House has never had to actually deal with that. That is until today. Let's just say Karine Jean-Pierre didn't exactly have a great time this morning fending off the panicking media. Media. He's absolutely running. Yeah. Um, well, he's saying that, and I'm sharing. I'm sharing with you his his view. And we would invite the president to come here and tell noted. us that directly. <laughs> noted. 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 Um, but, but he's awake. Uh, what was the president trying to say when he said that he beat Medicare? He meant to say uh, he beat Big Pharma. I mean, that's what he meant to say. He arrives back in the United yeah. States. 12 or 13 days before the debate. So his explanation for a poor debate performance is jet lag. So and what I want to say is it's it's the jet lag and also the cold, right? It is the two things uh, and that occurred. About the president's debate performance, uh, you didn't mention travel, yeah. the jet lag, the foreign trip. So I think you can understand uh, why it was a little bit puzzling to hear the president mentioning that as his explanation yeah. for the first time last night. I'm just, yeah. can you clarify whether, when you took the podium yesterday, yeah. did you and, not know that that and was I, a And I would say that is my bad. That is part of, uh, that is part of, um, uh, uh, how, how is it that the president was still tired 12 days after returning from Europe, uh, had a cold, but then went to the Waffle House, and then the following day staged such a huge comeback that he gave those North Carolina remarks. Like, help us understand. Have you had a cold before? Of course I've had okay. a cold before. Okay, so but you we probably, well, well, come on, come on, Jackie. For certain. I have an afternoon nap every day. Let me be very clear about this. This is a president that wakes up every morning and puts the American people first. That's what he does. He does that every single day. That is his focus. Uh, I am not going to speak to sources out there 
unnamed sources out there. That's not what I'm going to speak to. Could you imagine if the media acted in this manner if they actually did their freaking jobs since day one? You know, it's so weird. Leftoids have insulated themselves in this ridiculous fantasy world. It's been years that they've been living in this alternate reality. Then Joe Biden shows up for the debate. It's a complete train wreck. And for some reason, they're all surprised. All these leftist journalists taken aback, shocked. I didn't know Joe Biden was in such a sorry state. Really, you didn't know. Don't you just find that rich? Because I'm pretty sure we've been screaming it from the mountaintops. We've been playing Joe Biden clip after Joe Biden clip for freaking years. You know, again, like I mentioned in the intro, from falling upstairs to falling off bikes, tripping on wires, falling asleep during public live events. We've been playing these clips on a non-stop basis, pointing our fingers, and throughout this entire time, they've been telling us that we're doctoring videos. Quote, cheap fakes. Remember right ahead of the debate, at the G7, they were telling us that clip that we were sharing, it was a cheap fake. Meant to distort Joe Biden's public image. Oh, it's just so shocking. No, it's not shocking. The only thing that's shocking here is how dishonest and totally corrupt the entire process is. They only ever tell the truth when their back's against the wall and they're forced to. It's not like it's this ethical draw to tell the truth, to do the right thing for the American voter, to keep people informed on the facts. No, the only time the mainstream media tells the truth is when Democrat power is in jeopardy. They'll only speak the truth about the Democrat Party and what they view as a necessary act to preserve and save the Democrat Party. You know, that's what this whole timeline tells us. There's been concern since day one. If you were actually a concerned American, a concerned citizen or journalist, you should have been saying something since day one. But if you're only saying something now, well, then you've proven your motives to everybody. The mainstream journalism apparatus is the DNC journalism apparatus. And once again, that's proven. And already the calls are being made, the talking points are being pushed out, causing the mainstream media pundits to do a complete 180. MSNBC's Mika Brzezinski was just calling on Joe to resign. And then a couple days later, here's what she's saying. On Friday's show, I should clarify, Joe said it may be time for Biden to consider stepping aside. The debate acted as a wake-up call that was a loss for Joe Biden, no question, but not a win for Trump. The choice is one terribly bad night versus a decade of destruction to our core beliefs, our democratic values, and yes, our constitution. Someone who stumbled over his words for 90 minutes versus someone who lied to the American people over and over again. A man slowed down by a cold versus a man with a cold, vile and merciless heart. I think in the days and weeks ahead, as we move away from this debate, clarity will hopefully set in. For me, Joe Biden is still the man for this moment. And once again, it proves the dishonesty. You have an actual honest reaction of panic. Joe Biden's clearly not well. We need to get rid of him. But then the DNC call comes in and all of a sudden, Joe just has some work to do. If you legitimately believe that the president of the United States was unhealthy, you wouldn't just do a complete 180 in 48 hours now, would you? Especially not if your concern of country is actually genuine. And so again, all I ask for is an end to the media double standard. Stop protecting this indefensible old fool let the American people see the truth and make the decisions themselves. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.